what's up i'm troubleshoot welcome back to another video in this quick guide i'll show you how to snapshot ubuntu wsl or any other ubuntu or linux distribution on wsl basically you can store backups different points in time and restore them at some stage in the future assuming you make some kind of crazy breaking change this is especially important when you're trying to do something crazy like install a graphical user interface or something along those lines experimental things that you may break your system with unfortunately leading you to need to install Ubuntu WSL again as the simplest solution. Anyways, regardless, how do you make snapshots and resume to different points in time? Unfortunately, there's no way of creating different snapshots and jumping backwards and forwards to them other than the already existing ways in Ubuntu and other distributions. You can install different bits of software and make backups then restore them in the future, but the absolute easiest way is to copy the entire operating system and back it up somewhere else. Sounds like a huge waste of space, but having a second copy is pretty much the simplest and easiest way of getting things done, and it's the official supported way by Microsoft. Instead of being in the Ubuntu terminal, we need to be in PowerShell, and we'll run WSL hyphen hyphen shut down just to close all of our existing WSL operating systems. Running WSL list, we'll see the install installed distributions on our computer. What we need to do is change to a directory where we'd like a backup. So I'll cd into maybe desktop. And now all we need to do is WSL hyphen hyphen export space followed by our distribution. In my case, Ubuntu. You can get the name from above. Just make sure it matches exactly. Then we'll need to give it a place to put the backup. I'll call it just Ubuntu.tar. It needs to be a .tar format. Hit enter and this will take a few minutes minutes to complete. You can go ahead and check your task manager to see exactly what's happening. You'll see things happening on your disk and you can estimate roughly how long it'll take based on the read and write speed as well as how big your distribution is. Usually this is going to take a few minutes and if you have tons of gigabytes of files, this is going to take much, much longer. If you have it on an SSD or NVMe SSD, things are going to be a lot faster, but it's still going to take quite a long time. We are creating a one-to-one -one backup after all. And there we go, the backup is now completed successfully. You can see a .tar file on my desktop that's 15.7 gigs in size. This is the entire operating system. Now from here, I'd recommend either gzipping it using gzip, or using something like 7-zip. I've simply selected the Ultra preset and I'm compressing it here. You can already see it's at about 35% of the original size. It's definitely worth backing these up. Anyways, you get the point. You can compress it quite small. Though, unfortunately, in order to restore it, you need it to be uncompressed in just normal tar format. So for example, mine would go from roughly 15 gigs to maybe five when I zip it up. It'll take some time to zip or gzip or 7-zip or whatever in order to restore it, we'll need to unzip it first, so it's just a tar, and now to actually import it. We need to run WSL, I'm going to have an import, followed by the distribution name, I'll call it UB2, then the install location. This needs to be somewhere else on your PC. I'll set it to just my desktop for now, in maybe UB2. That sounds good. Then we need the name of the file that we're bringing back, in this case, ubuntu.tar. Hit enter, and the extraction will start. You can see a new UB2 folder with a VHDX file inside of it, a virtual hard drive X file, and all we need to do is wait for this to finish unpacking. This should be a bit faster than creating the tar as we're just unzipping it. But again, you'll be bottlenecked by your CPU, possibly RAM, and more than likely hard drive or SSD speed. If you're backing up from a hard drive, I'd highly recommend putting it on a separate hard drive if possible. That way, you're not going to be bottlenecked by the head spinning around. It'll be a lot faster if you take it from one drive to another in a backup and that drive back to the original one or a different drive in a restore. Keeping it on the saved drive is going to make things quite a bit slower, especially incredibly so if you're on a hard drive. There we go. The backup is now finished. WSL list, you should see UB2. Great. Now we can fire back into it. UB2 here, for example, and we're back on Ubuntu. Neo fetch. You can see we're on Lunar Lobster, a pre-release version. And if I fire into the normal Ubuntu here, which is also the same, obviously, this is what we backed up from Neo fetch. Once again, Lunar Lobster pre-release. 
awesome. We've now successfully backed up and restored an operating system in WSL2. Now, assuming you want to remove or uninstall a specific distribution later, what we can do is simply WSL list and WSL unregister, followed by our distribution name, UB2 in my case. Do note that this doesn't just unlink it from WSL, it also deletes the original files here, being the VHDX file that we just extracted in our backup and restore. We do still have the backup here, obviously, as that's a separate file in a different place. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. So thank you all for watching. My name is Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.